Okay, so I think what we'll do is we'll call this Lecture 3A, uh, simply because if you look at the course outline, we have analyzing literature, and then we also have the first short story. So what I'll do is I'll send them in two separate files. Okay, I think that'll be easier. Uh, and yeah, anyway, it'll, it'll just be easier. Okay, so now we're going to talk about literature, okay, analyzing literature. And like I said in the, the first lecture that we did, right, the introduction, uh, this is crucial to understand. If you want to get a really good grade in this course, it's crucial to understand how do we look at literature at, at a higher level, okay? Not a, not, a, not a high school level, all right? So some of the stuff I'm going to talk about may sound exactly like the stuff that you learned in high school, but then we're going to take it to a different level. You'll see what I mean. So, and also we'll talk about how a literary paper is very different from other disciplines. You're going to, you're going to find that out very quickly, all right? For instance, uh, I'm going to go off the notes now. If you're in history, you're going to notice that a history paper is almost the opposite. It's almost a 180 of what they look for in a literature paper, right? Or political science. So, so watch for that as we go through this, okay? Number one, first thing when it comes to analyzing literature, know the story. If you're going to write on, an S, uh, on a short story, you probably have to read it at least twice, maybe even three times, because each time you read a story, you're going to, you're going to see different things. When I start to do the lecture, okay, in, in the second half of, of today, okay, or in the second half of this lecture, you'll see, like, you'll, you'll think, I didn't see that, I didn't notice that. Well, there are times where I do the same if I've read a story 20 times, where I'll think, oh, wow, that's interesting. I didn't see that connection before. So it is crucial that you know the story. And I will know if you know the story because you'll make simple, if, if you haven't even read the story, if all you do is write your paper based on the lecture, you may get names like incorrect um, or places incorrect. And I'll, I'll know, I'll know. So know the story. So like I said, uh, like, if you think about it, you really only have to read two stories for this course. If, you, if you've already made up your mind as to what essay, uh, story you're going to write your essay about, then really there's only two that you have to know. Know them inside out, all right? So at least, read them at least twice, at least twice. And that's, that's basically, that's almost the, the, the first third of the page, all right? And so there's a few things then that, that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you, things you want to think about when you actually read a story. First of all, when you first read a story, don't worry about understanding all the hidden messages and all that. That'll be my job. Well, they all show you stuff as we go through it, right? Simply read the story the first time through, just so you get a feel for, you know, character and plot and all of that, all right? So, when you start to analyze, however, okay, the first thing you want to think about, obviously, would be identifying the theme or the subject. Remember, by the way, I hope you have your notes in front of you. Okay, you always want to have your notes in front of you, so you're highlighting or whatever. I bolded things, but but I'm I can't do it all for you. And again, when you're taking notes, all of your notes will be different. Each student will be different, and so highlight the things that's, that stand out to you. So, knowing the subject of the theme, right? And again, all when when I do the the lecture on Paul's case, we'll start talking about well, what is the subject? What's the theme here? But I'll get into much more detail as well. And then, and this is really important, all right? Focus on one aspect, okay? One aspect that you're going to analyze in the story. I'm going to show you so many different possibilities when it comes to interpretation, but you don't want to give me all those interpretations. You're going to choose one and you're going to work it through. So that's why in number two, I bolded one. Focus on one aspect of the essay, uh, sorry, of the short story that you're going to analyze, okay? And then that's not to say that you can't bring other things into the essay, but your focus okay, will be that, that one element. And like I said, when we get to Paul's case, I'll, I'll show you what I mean. Think about it just for a moment, all right? I'm getting a bit off topic here. I, I do that a lot. I, I, I've done it in each of the lectures so far. But rather than, you know, dealing with like, like a Let's just say there's a family, okay? Mother, father, sister, and brother. Let's just say you want to write your essay on a certain theme, okay? X, doesn't matter what it is. So first I, fo I focus on the father, then the mother, then the sister, then the brother. No, no, no. You do not want to do that. Instead, you take one of those characters, perhaps, right? 
and you focus on that character. That's not to say that you can't bring other characters, obviously, into the essay, but keep your focus to one aspect. And again, I'm going to talk about that over and over and over again, especially when we get to a later story, The Rocking Horse Winner. All right. So for now. Um, so as you read, as I said, for the first time through, just just read it for the enjoyment of the story, like figure out, OK, so that's what happened. But then if you're going to write an essay on it, go back and search for I'm at number three now, search for and interpret patterns. Are there certain patterns that are operating when in a given story? Right. And so maybe 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 there's a concept that the writer keeps going back to. Right. And again, when when we do Paul's Paul's case, I'll, I'll show you there, there. There's a few that are very, very clear. You'll see them when you read the story. You'll see, like I said, in, in, the, in the I think in the first lecture, I said Paul's case is a perfect story to start with. It really is. All right. So but again, your choice, Paul's case or the uh, the yellow wallpaper, whatever you want. And then finally, after you've done some work, which I think we'll be doing in lecture four, I'm going to show you exactly what I mean by doing some work then you'll find some supporting evidence. And that's going to surprise you. What I'm about to say when it comes to supporting evidence may surprise you. So keep with me, all right? Um, this lecture should be about another hour, maybe, right? Maybe not. We'll see. We'll see. And so notice in number four, find supporting evidence. To do so, you may want to use sources other than, okay, the literary work to support your thesis. That sounds a bit vague at the moment, but by the time we're done today, right, you'll know exactly what I mean by that. All right. OK. Finally, analyze. Don't retell. And that's probably the toughest thing when it comes to a literary paper. When we retell the plot, we're not really giving an insight into an argument. And so you don't simply want to say this happened and then this happened and then this happened. You want to argue why did it happen? Make a note right now, okay? Right beside where it says analyze, write the word why, question mark. Why did it happen? Not just that it happened. That's the difference, as you'll see as we go through this, that's the difference between, okay, an argument and retelling, okay? Why did it, not what happened, why did it happen? And the answer will come from you, not from the story, as you'll see. You'll have to formulate that on your own with my help, obviously, right, from the lectures. Okay? All right. And so that's basically, you can see I bolded why, the word why. Okay? Like, like I said, I've done this so often, I, I, I anticipate basically the notes. And so now what we're going to do is simply a primer, all right? We're, we're just going to do a primer in terms of literature. Most of this you, you, you did in high school, so uh, if, if you don't want to take notes, fine, except for a couple, one or two things. So let's start with plot, all right? Obvious, right? We, we need a story. So plot is obviously essential. That's the events that occur in a story, right? So I don't even need to even move on beyond that, except for almost every story, almost every story, I know this sounds really general, Almost every story has the same plot. Okay, if you if you go back to to Aristotle, right, which I'm sure many of you learned in high school, plot follows more or less the same dimensions, more or less. Okay, I know there are exceptions. Of course, there are exceptions, right? Pulp fiction always comes to mind when I start talking about these things. So let's think about a plot just for a moment. X meets Y. I, I'm doing the bare basics here. X meets Y. They fall in love. They argue and break up. Either they get back together or they don't. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> now, let me give you some insight. I'm a sucker for those Christmas movies, right? You know the, the Hallmark Christmas movies? It's the same damn movie every time. And yet, some are better than others. But it's the same plot. <laughs> okay, so now you see what I'm getting at. It just so happens that certain writers can 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 do things with 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 character with with symbolism with so many other things that make certain stories better than others all right so again when we see paul's case the arc of the story is all there it's all there 
And most stories work that way. Don't don't email me about O. Henry or, you know, the line shows up at the end or whatever. If you don't know what I mean by that, don't worry. All right. But and that's it. That's it. So notice your notes here. There was a, a Russian formalist critic who argued that there's actually his name was Vladimir Prop. You've got it right there. All right. You've got his dates. He argued there's only 31 stories in all of storytelling. That's it. That's it. And when you really break it down the way I did there, X meets Y and all that, it's true. It's true. So so the plot is something that is almost a given. It's almost a given in, in when, when we read essays. But there'll be information within the plot, right, that makes certain, certain stories stand out from others. Okay? All right. And so plot, obviously, right? And again, I, I don't necessarily even agree 100% with everything I'm saying here. I'm just trying to show you an introduction. And so according to according to Aristotle, then, a plot needs cause and effect. Something, something happens to make other things happen, right? And then finally, we have a conclusion or an ending. Now, even if you think that there isn't an ending, like if, if the ending is open-ended, right? That was redundant, wasn't it? But if it's open-ended, that's still an ending. So again, don't email me, you know, like, well, what about this or whatever? <laughs> I don't know why I did that face there, but anyway. So, and as I said, and so it was Aristotle who actually wrote the foundations for storytelling, right? Um, in a book called Poetics, which was published around 322 BC, okay, BCE, before the Common Era. Okay, so you, you get the idea, right? You know all that. Okay, so now we get into character. And we have in, in stories usually, right? Not always, by the way, right? In, in Greek antiquity, uh, for the longest time, there was only one character who would actually be on stage other than the chorus. And uh, it wasn't until, excuse me, it wasn't until uh, the author Sophocles who actually suggested, why don't we have more than one? <laughs> Which, of course, we can't even fathom today, right? If you only have one person in a play, well, that... There's not much dialogue going on there, right? You know what I mean? So it was, yeah, but it was actually Sophocles who uh, who, who invented this whole idea of having two or three characters on stage at the same time, other than other than the chorus, right? Anyway, so we have the protagonist, pro, simply meaning for, an agonist, meaning one who overcomes a struggle. So again, right, very common, very common in storytelling. And so the, the protagonist, now and notice the way I have it in the notes, is the person who overcomes or does not, okay, or does not, obstacles. So that's crucial. In what I would call simplistic storytelling, right, the, you know, you'll have the hero, if you will, that would be the term, and, you know, the hero conquers and overcomes, and but in more interesting stories, quite often, the protagonist does not overcome and I don't want to give anything away but but you'll see what I mean as you look at the first couple of stories that I've chosen all right and so then and we can also have the antagonist okay who would be obviously the opposition to the protagonist boom all right you've got it in your notes then we have an anti-hero and so I think when you read Paul's case, you might even see Paul as an anti-hero. The definition right there, right? Someone who defies convention or who mocks it, tries, tries to live on the edge outside, right? And so maybe the, the most famous example of 20th century American literature would be Holden Caulfield. And that would be from Catcher in the Rye. So some of you may have read that one. Great book, by the way. Great book. If, uh, if, you're, if you're into to, to literature, you should check that one out as well. All right? And then, of course, we'll have supporting characters, right? Um, but again, try not try not to make the focus of your paper surrounding every character in the story. Don't break your story or your essay down so that you deal with you know characters individually. As I said, choose an aspect, work it through. But we'll be doing more of that in in lecture four. I will be showing you exactly how to break that down. So as I said, don't worry about emailing me on questions like that. We're, we'll get to it and I'll take you through it. No problem. All right. But uh, when it comes to creating an outline, right? And actually, there might be a couple of, of, of things on the on the uh, website on See You Learn that might actually explain that. But don't worry. If, if, if not, I, I'll, I'll get you through it. I promise. Okay. 
And then finally, <coughs> um, quite often you might find something called an archetype in a short story. Some of you probably learned about that in high school. There was a guy, I'd given you his dates there, Carl Gustav Jung, and he wrote on these, these things that, that seem to be universal. All right. And so I may touch on that, um, not necessarily with Paul's case. Uh, I would say more probably with uh, the handsomest drowned man in the world when we get to that. OK. Um, and actually, if you for those of you who who studied archetypes, that goes all the way back to Plato and the notion of forms. OK. And again, if you if you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. All right. It, 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 Keep that in mind for any, any any allusion that I make, all right? When I make a reference to something outside, don't worry. Like, like we're worried simply about about your you writing your essays. So if there is an allusion that I make and you think, oh, well, what? It's not like there's an exam, right? There is no exam for this course. So don't worry about it. Okay. Now, finally, or maybe not finally, but setting. Setting quite often is not important, Okay. But sometimes it's crucial. And I will argue, right, in the next lecture, in, in 3B, if you want to call it that, that the setting of Paul's case is incredibly important. Where the story starts is very important. And so that's not always true, but I think it will be, okay, for the first story that we look at. All right? And again, I'll, like, I mean, if you have the evening, you, you, you'll be watching that in the next hour, right? So anyway, and then finally the theme like we started with, all right? The subject matter of the story. And so it's, it's interesting that theme is something you probably concentrated on in high school, okay? That's not necessarily what we're gonna be doing with our papers. We, we will, we will, but, but we'll be doing it in a different way. It, again, I keep doing this, I know, in a more sophisticated way. When you watch the next lecture, I'm going to show you a whole lot of a whole lot of different ways of looking at literature. We're getting to it. OK, I don't want to give everything away just yet. All right. All right. Finally. OK, now this this is where you get you make or break this course. So take a look. Page three. Hidden themes. At this level for a higher grade, you'll want to find something in the text, right? big star, big star. Here's the whole course right here. I'm not kidding. Right there. You want to find something in the text that is not readily evident, okay, from a surface reading. You're going to read the story and you're going to think, you know something, I see what happened there, but I think this is why it happened. Now, it's not explained at all in the text, okay? So let me say that again. Like, this is crucial right now. Something happens in the text, but it's not explained. Well, you are going to make an argument. Okay, why did that happen? And maybe your argument won't come from literary analysis. It may come from, maybe you were taking a course in psychology. Maybe there's something wrong with a character. It's never mentioned. All right, that's exactly what I'm looking for in your papers. OK, so when you do an evaluation of this course, don't say, I don't know what he was looking for. That's what I want right there. You're looking for something that is not it's not clearly stated in the text. But you are going to create an argument claiming that's what's going on. And we'll do more and more of that. Like I said, when you watch the lecture on Paul's case, you'll, you'll see exactly what I mean. All right. And so that will allow you then to create your own unique argument. And so some of the things I'm about to say in, in, in the next part of the lecture, they might seem odd, but again, we're moving away from high school. And so by beginning with your own idea, not something obvious from the text, right? If, if, we, if, if you were told something about a character, don't make that your thesis, right? Instead, you have to interpret, well, what's the significance behind that? That's how we create a really good argument. All right? Okay. And, and again, I'll, I'll elaborate on that. And so, how do how do we then create a really strong argument? Well, okay, once you've 
Uh, sorry, I, I think I made a, a mistake there. I should have corrected that. But once you've read the text and watched the lecture, I know it says attended the lecture, but anyway, well, you're kind of attending the lecture right now, right? Then you start to do maybe some research thinking about a topic, right? Okay. And so this is going to sound really odd, but I'm going to talk about, here's my topic, all right? In Paul's case, <clears throat> I'm giving something away here, but it doesn't matter. I want to write on sexuality in Paul's case. Okay? Okay. The worst thing you can do at this point is go to the library, okay? Go to the library database and look up Willa Cather, Paul's case, sexuality. You do not want to do that. That's exactly what I did in first year, right? And it's exactly what you probably did in high school. The minute you do that, what happens is the, the research... Okay, on Paul's case on sexuality, it will take over your paper. It will become the, the, the voice of your paper. You don't want to do that. Now, on the other hand, let's just say, <clears throat> excuse me, I had an idea on sexuality. I don't want to go look at Paul's case. Instead, I want to look at, you know, behavior, sexuality that has nothing to do with literature. And then I apply it and interpret and incorporate it into the story. That's how you create a really good essay. Okay, so let me say that again. When I was in first year and when I was in high school, what I would do is, okay, symbolism of flowers. Okay, flowers. <clears throat> Sorry. Flowers in Paul's case. Okay, you'll see when you read it, the flowers are everywhere. Okay, you don't want to do that because once again, the author of that, that essay, okay, that you're quoting from, he or she will make your entire paper. And that's not going to get you a very high grade. It might get you a B, a low B. You want your voice being the thing that pushes everything through. And again, I'm going to help you with that when we go through the story together. Okay? I'll give, and I'm going to give you sources. I'm going to tell you, if you're interested in this, go look at whatever. But they won't be from, they won't be essays based on the story. There'll be other things outside the story. If you've already been to see you learn, you've probably seen what I'm talking about, right? Because I do have about three or four examples, right, that have nothing to do with, with literature per se. They have more to do with psychology or sociology. And that, so that's what you want to be thinking about, all right? And so basically, and I'm almost through page three now. In other words, you, I don't know if I can stress it anymore, okay? Don't go looking, don't type in Paul's case at, at, the library database and see what comes up if you want to get an A. It, it won't happen. It won't happen. Okay? And so, as I said, maybe from a different field. Maybe maybe you were you, you, you saw something, as I said, going on a psychology course and you think, oh, oh, that's what's going on there. Perfect. That's what I'm looking for. I don't know if I can be any clearer. Okay? And so, take a look at the top of page four then. Yeah. The, the, these ideas may come from psychology, sociology, science. I've had students from, from the sciences who have written brilliant essays on, on, on a variety of subjects. Okay? And so, like, think, think of a science like entropy. Not a science, but a topic like entropy. And it, that, that comes up in literature quite often. So, it's almost, it, it sounds odd, doesn't it? I'm actually asking you to write a literary paper with a foundation outside of literature. So, that also then suggests a couple of other things. You do not want to be quoting from, uh, from novels or other short stories when it comes to your essay. That doesn't make any sense, right? Instead, I'll show you the foundations, okay, of a really good argument that is founded on, you know, academic ideas. So, Again, you'll see what I mean. The minute I start talking about Paul's case, I'm going, to, I'm going to be throwing so many different possibilities at you, right? And remember, when when I do the lecture on Paul's case, remember you're only expected to take one idea. If the, if an idea pops up and you think, oh, that sounded interesting, great, then you can start exploring that. And I'll give you names, like I'll give you authors to to go look at. I'll take care of all that for you. Okay. Now, the next thing is, th this is the, the most difficult thing to explain when it comes to a literary paper and its tone. 
Sounds obvious, but it's not. Tone is really subtle. And so I think rather than me explaining it to you, let's look at an example, okay? And so to understand the difference between tone, like explaining something is one thing, arguing is another. Okay, like each has their own tone, but there's a huge difference. Okay, explaining, which you don't want to do, and arguing, which you do want to do. So let's let's just take a quick example here. It's good that you have the notes here so I don't have to take, you know, an hour just to write everything out. So let's just take a look. Now, the example that I have here comes from an, uh, the short story. It's the last short story we're going to do. Um, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the story is. It's, it's the language. That's what I want you to be aware of. Okay, so let's just take a look here. The mother in the rocking horse winter seems to be missing something. Now notice right away, they seems to be missing something in her life. She hopes that money will satisfy whatever she is missing. So her son Paul begins to accumulate money in hopes that she will no longer okay, feel like she is missing something. Okay, all that is true. But it's not an argument. You know, like, so all you're doing is more or less telling what happened. There's another big star or highlight, okay? You want to write now in your notes, don't do that. So now let's, let's take a look at almost the exact same thing. Almost the exact same thing. But the tone is going to be different, okay? Yeah, the reason, by the way, why you, you, you wrote the way you did, if you, if you did that, is because you didn't start with a really good thesis. If you have a really good thesis, which, which again, we're going to do together, that allows you then to, it, it gives you room to be able to create an argument. If you don't have a strong thesis, like in other words, let's just say uh, your thesis was the, the, the character X is sad. Well, <laughs> all right. Okay. Well, well, we know that. So therefore you've got nowhere to go. Okay. Does that make sense? Right? Like if, if, if that's your thesis, well, then you've got nowhere to go. And again, I'm going to do more with that, right? When we look at the thesis itself, I'll show you how to turn a topic like that, sad, into a really good argument. I'll show you how to do that as well. Okay. Okay. So now let's take a look at the, what looks like the exact same wording, but the tone all of a sudden changes. And by the way, because of the way I've set this up, you can tell I probably set my paper up at the beginning in order to allow me to be using the language that I am here. So, the fact that the house keeps whispering, there must be more money. Okay, and then I've shown you how to document a quote, but don't worry about that for now, all right? We'll, we'll get to that. When we do paragraphing, I'll show you exactly how all that works, all right? There's there's a few different ways you can do it. It doesn't doesn't always have to look like that, Lawrence 408. But, but anyway, so the fact that the house keeps whispering, quote, there must be more money, and that's a phrase that keeps coming up in the story, suggests that the mother is suffering from a specific lack created by her unconscious desire to fulfill a void in her life. Okay? So now, notice the difference there. In the first example, okay, vague, quite vague. In the example I have for the second one, notice the specific language, unconscious desire. The minute you start talking about things like that, well, then obviously you would then start to develop, well, what is that unconscious desire? What's causing that problem? And I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you a couple of examples, even in Paul's case, right? What, what, what's going on there unconsciously that is not told, we're not told, but you're going to make that argument, right? That's what we're looking for. And so then you do some, like, like you have an insight then maybe you go do some research, but that it, it's funny the way I'm saying that though, because when you when you have the insight, chances are you already did the research in a, in a weird way. In other words, you, you probably heard it from someone else, like from a, another prof or whatever, and you think, oh, oh, maybe I should go look that up, and that that's kind of the way it works. Okay, I, I hope I was clear on that. What, what in in the notes, what I say is based on the research you've already done. But all I mean by that is. As you were reading the story, the research you've already done maybe is something that, that you came across somewhere else and you thought, oh, but that, but you don't stop there. Then you go actually do more research to get your specific stuff, right? 
okay, to get the specific language you need. All right. All right. And so and so notice what is the word that that I'll I'll keep saying over and over again on this course specific. The more specific you get in your writing, in your ideas, the better your grade. If you're vague and general, all right, well then, no, you're, you're not going to do as well. Okay? All right. And so, yeah, and so, like I said, this lecture is only going to be about 40 minutes, only because we still have another one coming up in week three, right? And so, so let's think about that just for a moment. Let's slow down just for a moment. So when it comes to plot, as I said, 31, 31 stories, that's it, that's it. So it's not the plot that we want to figure out, right? It's the motivation behind why a character does what he or she does. That, so, so again, I don't know if that's in the notes. That's what we're looking for. What's the motive? Why, why, why? Okay, make a note right now, okay? There's two ways of exploring a paper. One is a good way, and one is <laughs> a not good way. <laughs> okay? All right. The not good way is the what. What happened? Okay? Okay? Please, write this down. So, the, and remember, not good way. Some people have a, have a way with the English language, and some people have not way. All right? So, so if you're writing about the what, what happened, all you're doing is retelling the story. Why? Why did it happen? And the answer, remember, the answer is not in the story. Okay, you have to come up with that on your own. The lighting in this room is very weird. It looks like I have, you know, it looks like this hand is, is lighter than this one for some reason, but anyway. So you have to figure out the why. Why is that happening? Why does Paul do what he does in the story? Again, I don't want to give it away just yet, okay? Give it away, give it away now. But, okay, I don't want to give it away just yet. But why does he do what he does rather than simply he does this? So shall I repeat that? Two ways of going about it. The what, which is what you don't want to do, because the what will simply give you a retelling, as opposed to the why. Why does the character, and, and notice I keep saying the character, okay? Choose one. Oh, I'm going to get to that as well, sorry. Choose one character. Whenever, whatever essay you're writing about, your focus should be on one character. That's not to say you can't bring others in. I'll be doing that in week four. Right? I'll be showing you all that. Okay, but that, but I just want to remind myself why I keep saying one character. So anyway, sorry. I'm just gonna have a sip of tea here. All right. So I think yeah. So in other disciplines. So here we go now. What's the diff difference between a literature paper and other disciplines? In other disciplines, you may be given a question, and the question okay, can, can have a yes or a no answer. Those are easy when it comes to a thesis statement, right? Like if, if all I'm asked to do is say yes or no to something, all right, well then I take a side and I work it through. English papers don't work that way. And I think you probably know that by now, right? Those, th those of you who, you know, in high school or if you've taken any other English courses, English doesn't work that way. You have to come up with these things on your own. So it's not a yes or a no. On the other hand, the, the whole idea of a yes or no proposition can help you in terms of creating a thesis, as you will see when we get to, I can't remember where it is in the outline, where, it gets, where we get to from subject to thesis, right? So again, I'm going to show you some tricks right to, to to get to that stage all right so anyway um just looking anything else i need to to worry about here and so yeah so so the thesis will obviously then be the foundation of the paper and I, i'll show you how to do that but i think there's no point in actually getting into that until we actually do the the lecture on paul's case because then we can actually we have something concrete that we can actually start utilizing, right, to to maybe give you more specifics, right? There's something that happens. Okay, I'll, I'll give you a little hint right now. We are told something on the very first page of Paul's case, which may be the trigger for everything else he does in the story. Now, if you if you see what I'm getting at there when you read the story, have the story read by the way before you watch the lecture. Okay, because it makes it makes it so much easier for you. You like being familiar with the story. When I start to point things out, you'll think, "Oh, okay, I remember that." So have the story read. That's always true. 
always the case. Have the story read before I do the lecture, all right? But something, we're told something on the very first page of the story, and it's never mentioned again except once near the end. The author obviously has chosen, okay, to put those points of reference in where she does. So, these are the kind of things I'm looking for, right? Can you find little, little nuggets that suggest, oh, Okay, they don't really elaborate on that, but I have a funny feeling I could write an argument on that. So, as I said, something happens, we're told on the very, not something happened, we're told about something on the very first page of the story. And it's almost never alluded to again. But maybe, just maybe, that's the motivation behind everything else the character does. So, I'm not going to give you the answer just yet, but, but go read the story. It's not a very long, well, it, 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 I think it, it might be the longest story on the course. And um, the, the story looks a bit odd, uh, simply because, in, uh, interestingly enough, in many of the copies, uh, editions that I've read for that story, they leave that piece of information out. When I first did this course about five years ago, uh, the story that I included, I, I didn't even notice it at first. I knew the story, but I, did, I, I didn't pay enough attention to see that the, what, that's missing. What, why is that missing? And, and it may have been controversial. So, and again, I'm being vague. I know you have to maybe crack the code. Well, you'll know in the next hour, right? So, um, but they actually left it out. So what I did was I had to go back and find a copy that would work better that included that information. So that's why the, the first essay, it, uh, the first short story, it, it's something I put together myself. All right. Uh, but, but anyway, but I found it fascinating that it was left out. The first, the, the second part where I say it's alluded to again at the very end, that was always included in all the editions, but the first mention was not. And the first mention changes everything about the story, all right? So anyway, um, and so, so like I said, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm getting back to the foundation of the paper, right? It's an insight, okay? And as I said, and I'll show you how to do that, or at least I'll, I'll try to help you how to do that. There's not a magic formula. That's the other interesting thing about writing essays in general, right? You should try to think about, especially when I start showing you form, organization, okay, structure, try not to think about each individual paper. Instead, try to get the whole concept of how a paper is put together. And once you do that, then the content will fall into place. Notice what I just did there? It's almost the opposite of what we're used to doing. Normally, we go to each writing assignment and we deal with them individually. I never do. If, if I'm asked to write a letter of reference, I already know exactly how I want to put it together. The content then, obviously, I would then have to figure out for each individual, okay? But I know, no, I'm going to start with academic, personal, whatever, right? It's like, and so, and, and essays work the same way, as we'll see, okay? We got lots of time, lots of time. We're slowly working into it. And so, a couple of last things then. Yeah, I, th I figured around 40, 45 minutes. As I said, you've got another one accompanying this. Um, yeah, especially if you choose to write on, say, the yellow wallpaper, remember you're writing about the story, not the world. I'll mention that more as we go along. You don't want to write a sociology paper. Don't write, like, half your paper should not be on feminism, okay, feminist movements of the 20th century. That's not to say you can't use feminist, feminist ideas in an essay, but you don't want to write, a, as I said, a sociology paper. And so watch out for that. That's why I have that under, uh, or just before, the part on research and documentation. And so, no personal observations in your essays, okay? No questions. Don't ask questions in your essays. I'll get to that more later on. In high school, you were probably taught this whole idea about having a grabber, or, or right? Don't don't do stuff like that. All right, we want to break you of all that. Okay, um, and yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to think here. What else we need? Obviously, you'll have quotes, but but I mean that's down the road. 
So let's not worry too much about research and documentation right now. I think the only reason I put that in there was because in the classroom, some students, they, 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 they want to ask about stuff like that. But I'm going to be talking about that when we do the, uh, the, the thesis and the and all that kind of stuff. So we'll, we'll get to that. All right. Um, and then obviously, one thing I should mention, make sure your paper has quotes. When you start writing, there should be quotes at least from the primary source, which means the short story itself. Okay. Otherwise, it, it's a fail. Like, like, like I, I'll fail the paper because where's your evidence? But again, again, don't email me on that. We'll, we're, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. And so, oh yeah, yeah. So the final thing on that, the bottom of page five now, a, a, a helpful hint. In the next lecture that you watch the, on Paul's case, when I actually go through the story, I'm gonna, like I said, I'm going to give you a hundred different ideas. Okay, one theory. Or even, even a word, believe it or not, I'm, I'm almost going to jump now to page six, we're almost done. A theory or a word would be enough to write a paper. You don't, you don't have to give, you know, well, I want to do Jung, Carl Jung, right? Remember we talked about archetypes? And then I'm going to talk about Freud. And then I'm going to talk about Marx. No, 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 no. That's exactly the problem I find with, with, I'd say, almost half the papers that are handed in the first time around. No, take one aspect and work it through. In a three-page paper to four pages, you don't have enough room to work through all those different theories and philosophers and all that. And so I'm anticipating now what I'm about to do in the second lecture today, okay? or, or at least the second lecture that will accompany this one. And so instead, choose one aspect work it through, all right? And so it, it's really interesting. If you look at words, I'm not kidding now, language is, is something we take for granted. We don't really think about the history or the etymology, that's the, the proper word, the etymology of words. Where do words come from? You're gonna be amazed at some of the things I'll show you, all right? But words such as, oh, I don't know, um, carnival, pride, love, revelation, modern. These words, we, we just kind of take for granted, but they have a whole history. You, you could look up the word modern or modernism okay, in the library database. You'll come up with hundreds of books trying to, trying to explain or define what that means. And so that's part of what I'm going to do as well, is just show you how, you know, through one word, we might be able to generate an entire essay. If we really uh, like, if we really do work on the understanding of that word, right? Revelation, especially, like you, I'm, I'm sure, it, like, like you probably all have an understanding of what revelation means, but in fact, that idea goes back to Greek antiquity, not what you think, and so that, and that's where literature gets really interesting. If a writer understands that, like when you get to the handsomest drowned man in the world on this course, you're going to be amazed at some of the things I'm going to show you in terms of language. All right. And so let's take a look. We're on page six now. I just want to make one. I want to make not a change. I just want to be clear about something. Right. Not everybody is, is worried about getting an A. Okay. Or an A plus. And I understand that. So notice what it says there. Your paper should have an argument, okay, proven through an analysis of the primary text, okay? It, like, obviously, if you want to do well. Uh, you should have key, key terms or phrases properly defined. Again, we haven't gotten to that just yet, so I'll sh we'll get to that. Remember I said we're going to look at definition, okay? So we'll, we'll get to all that. And then notice it says, research is not expected for your first essay. Okay, so let's be clear. When I say it's not expected, what I mean, if you want to get a C on your first page, in other words, if you're happy with just a passing grade, then you don't need to worry. Let, let's just say you're not worried about graduate school. You're not like all you, you need this course to, to, to graduate and that's it. And you don't care about your grade. You don't need research. You don't need to do the stuff I'm going to be doing in the next lecture. You don't need to go find out all that in order to pass. On the other hand, if you want to get a high grade, an A, oh yeah, research will be expected. I just wanted to be very clear on that, okay? I don't want to put pressure on you feeling that you have to do research if all you want to do is just get a passing grade. You can get a passing grade, you know, I've already explained to you really what a C paper is, like, so, so you don't have to worry about research. But if you want an A, 
okay, or even a, a, a strong B, B plus, right, you will need to do some type of research. But hold off, okay? I'm going to give you the research you need. It's on See You Learn. <laughs> like, I'm going to explain all that. I've already taken care of all that for you. It's just a matter of how much work do you want to put into the course. And I, I seriously mean that, all right? And so, as I said, um, yeah, I don't know if I need to do anything else. Definition of a keyword, okay? We'll talk about that. Where where would we put a definition? Like, like as I said, I'll show you all that kind of stuff, all right? So, uh, 45 minutes, that's what I figured, right? Just hit the 45 mark. And uh, this is only part one of two, because now I'm going to be sending you the, uh, the lecture on Paul's case. I'll look very probably different because I'm not gonna do it right now, but, uh, it, but it will be accompanied with this lecture as well, okay? All right, so I think that's good enough for today. All right, we'll see you soon or talk to you. Okay, bye.